Let's take a look at a few of the different ways we can create dab or stamp based brushes. The first method is to capture a dab. In order to capture a dab, we need to first create an image of a dab. I'll create a new canvas. The canvas size is going to determine the maximum dab size. The largest brush you can make in Painter is 750 pixels, but it doesn't hurt to make the dab a bit larger than that. If you make the dab too small, it may look blurry when you paint with a brush size that is larger than the dab size. Also, if your dab has a lot of fine details, you may want to add a little headroom so that the features remain crisp if you apply a dab effect to the dab. I'll choose pixels as the unit of measurement. When you're working in pixels, the resolution doesn't matter. So I'm going to enter 1024 for the width and height to create a perfectly square canvas. Before we create our custom dab, let's take a look at some examples of captured dabs. I'll choose the chalk category, and many of these brushes use captured dabs. If we look in the dab preview panel, we can see a larger preview of the dab. When I paint with a captured brush, the dab will be repeated along the stroke. We can create a captured dab out of anything a photograph, a brush stroke, or even a computer generated image. The only limitations are that it needs to fit on a square canvas and it needs to be in grayscale. The dab is loaded with the color chosen in the color picker. So I can select red and now my dab is red when I paint. Let's go ahead and illustrate a custom dab with the brushes in Painter. I'll select the default scratchboard brush and restore all default variants. Then I'll choose black to paint with. I want to make sure that I'm painting directly onto the canvas layer, although you could paint on a layer as long as you flatten the image or hide the background before you try to capture the dab. I'll paint a wavy black line, followed by two more wavy lines in lighter gray values. Black will be the most opaque area of the dab. The gray values will be semi-transparent. You can fill the canvas to make a square or round brush, or you can make your dab taller or wider. I know this seems like a weird dab shape, but you might be surprised how something abstract like this might work well for painting. Before we can turn this into a dab, we need to select a brush that we want to apply the captured dab to. You can select any default brush and then just change the dab type to captured. I'll choose fat chalk since it's already using captured. The next thing we want to do is create a selection to define what we want to capture. You can use the rectangular selection tool or press Ctrl A to select all. White is going to be transparent, so the background is not going to show up in the dab. In either case, select as little of the background as possible. If you happen to be working with a layered document, it's best to make the background white. In order to capture this dab, we'll use the Capture Dab button in the Captured panel. A dialog appears, giving us the option to name the dab and place it into a specific library. I'll name it Wavy, and save it in my custom dab library. Now if we look in the captured dab library, you can see the new dab has appeared. It may be good to save as to save the dab composition as a RIF or PSD in case you want to edit it at a later point. Let's create a new canvas so that we can test our brush. I'll use the painter default preset. I'll make sure the brush tool is selected. I'll pick a blue color and I'll paint a few test strokes. Now you can see what the dab looks like as a stroke. It looks kind of odd, but we've only chosen some of the basic brush properties. So let's see if we can make the brush more interesting. First, I'll reduce the grain to 80% so we can see the lighter gray line in the dab. We can also try changing the method to drip and the subcategory to grainy drip. Next, let's go to the size panel and let's add some size jitter with some smoothness and reduce the minimum size as well. Now if I paint some test strokes, I'm getting a really unique looking brush. This brush might work well for painting trees or water. If performance slows down a bit when working with large captured brushes, this is normal. You can see how powerful these custom dabs can be. You can use them very intentionally to create a specific shape or brush stroke, or you can create abstract shapes like this to see what kind of effects you can get. Let's change the method to wet and the subcategory to real wet buildup. I'll lay down some paint and then pick the brush up to let the media diffuse. Now this brush creates an interesting water pattern in watercolor. I'll also add an angle expression that is set to bearing with an appropriate angle range and stepping. 
This will allow me to tilt my pen to change the angle of the dab. This really helps the brush not look so static. The next step is very important. Because we started by modifying a default brush, we will want to make sure to save the new brush as its own variant and then reset the default brush we modified. If I were to reset this variant without saving it, I'd lose my progress. So I'll save this brush by going to Brushes, Save Variant. I'll give it a unique name like Broken Watercolor. You can save the brush in any category you like, though I recommend you save your custom brushes in a custom brush category. Next, I'd recommend exporting the brush to back it up to your computer. You can do this by going to Brushes, Export, Brush. Captured dabs are a great way to create custom brushes, but they do have some limitations. A captured dab can only be grayscale, so you can't have full color dabs, and you're only able to paint with one single dab shape per brush. If you want to take custom brush creation to the next level, then you'll want to check out image hose nozzles. Like captured dabs, the image hose nozzles are image based, but nozzles can be full color, and you can use multiple unique dabs at once. There is a category of image hose brushes, but the image hose nozzles are what we'll be creating. These can be found in the nozzle libraries. If necessary, you may need to reset your layout to restore the image hose nozzles palette drawer. I'll scroll through this library just to give you an idea of all the different kinds of image hose nozzles that I have created over the years. Here is the water drops nozzle. I'll select an image hose brush, and when I paint with it, I get a stroke made from water drops. Unlike capture dabs, there is more than one dab being generated by this brush. This particular nozzle is meant to be used as a stamp, so I'll click with my mouse instead to create individual drops. There are several nozzles for painting leaves. I can click with my mouse to create individual leaves, or I can paint strokes to create clumps of leaves. Some nozzles are in grayscale, but we will look at how to add color to those in a later lesson. I'll select the daisies brush, and if I draw a stroke or tap with my pen, I'm able to create daisies. If you want your nozzle to spray out randomly rather than in single file, you can choose spray size P angle R, and that will randomly spray out the stamp while rotating it. You are not limited to using nozzles that look like objects. You can also use image hose nozzles to simulate natural media as well. For example, here is my dry dabs nozzle, which creates little dabs. I'll select linear size P angle D color, choose a green for my additional color, and paint a few dabs. You can see that I get something that looks like a bristle brush being dabbed on the canvas. I also have a nozzle that creates a really nice fan brush effect. You can create just about any kind of brush you want using the image hose nozzles. If you can paint it, you can make a brush out of it. The last method of brush creation that I want to discuss is importing ABR brushes from Photoshop. ABR brushes are the Photoshop equivalent of painter's brush variants. ABR brushes are converted into captured dabs like the ones we looked at earlier. Because some of Photoshop's brush properties are not supported in Painter, you won't be able to import the exact brush properties, but you can bring the dab shapes into Corel Painter. I should also mention that brushes made with recent versions of Photoshop are more likely to encounter problems rather than brushes that were created with older versions. The best brush candidates are simple stamp-based brushes without a lot of advanced properties. Let's go to Brushes, Import, New from Photoshop Brush Stamps ABR. I'll locate some of the default brushes by selecting Adobe Photoshop in my Program Files folder, and then looking in Presets for Brushes. I'll select the Legacy Brushes. When importing ABR files, you now have the option of importing the brushes or just the dabs. The dabs will appear in your captured library. Since all you are getting from ABR files is the dab shape, you may as well just import the dabs on their own. If you were to save the ABR files as brushes, you'd need to choose a name for a new category that these brushes would appear in. It may take a while to import all of the brushes or dabs if there are a lot. Upon completion, a message may appear saying that some of the stamps could not be imported. Some ABR files may not be compatible with Painter, but many are. You may also try importing each Photoshop brush individually if you're unable to import an ABR with multiple brushes in it. I'll look in the new Legacy Brushes library and enlarge it so I can see more of the Photoshop dabs I imported. 
As you can see, they have been placed into a new category that inherited the name of the ABR file. Here's a brush that looks like grass blades. Here's one that looks like a leaf and every sort of texture brush. You will need to tweak these brushes in order to get them as close as possible to behaving as they do in Photoshop. I don't know the exact Photoshop settings for this brush, so I will just use the dab shapes and choose the properties that I like. If the spacing is too tight, the dabs will overlap too much, so you may want to increase that a bit. Now this brush creates a different look. You can even make ABR brushes into blenders simply by changing the blending preset. The ability to import Photoshop ABR brushes is great because there are loads of Photoshop brushes out there, many of which are free.